Episode 42 of Spreading the Floor. I am your host, Jacob Cooperman, joined by my co-host to the left of me, Nigel Petty Fernandez, the man, the myth, the legend. We got to talk about these refs, man. But more importantly, I don't want to focus on the refs because everyone else focuses on the refs. I want to talk about what Donovan Mitchell said in the post-game press conference following the Jazz loss to the 76ers. Yes. Right? We have to talk about that. He popped off. He popped off at the referees. And, and honestly, man, you know, why are you complaining? Wow, really? Why are you complaining? Here, I'll get into it in a second, right? Actually, no, no, I'm going to get into it now. Donovan Mitchell is on the team currently in the Jazz. That is first in the West. Has had the highest winning percentage coming into the All-Star break. If any, t- and listen, I know a lot of players have been outspoken about the refing. Whatever the refing is horrible. I think we all can tell, right? Yeah. That's no. That's no secret. With fan, without fans in the stadium, it's it's been pretty abhorrent. Yeah. So my whole thing is Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert came after out after the game, and they were very, you know, they were outspoken about how terrible it was, and yeah, there were a lot of calls that really could have gone their way, but. I feel like nobody looked at the actual game because the the Jazz had a pretty considerable and a sizable lead at that. But the problem with the 76ers is the 76ers are just a hell of a team. Yeah. Joel Embiid, he's been having a hell of a season. Had 40 points that night. Played like an MVP caliber center. Played his ass off, right? Yes. He flopped, and that was one of the calls that that you know Donovan Mitchell took exception to. Yeah, I get it. But also, that's kind of just part of his game. Right. You know, like... I feel like the NBA, the status quo that you need to focus on with the NBA right now is not complaining about something that everyone else has to deal with. I, I also think it's it's pretty funny if you're like, like right, look, you're 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 complaining about something that everyone else in the league has been outspoken about, has complained about, has dealt with on a on a nightly basis, starting from the playoffs last year and probably even further back from that. But what makes it extra for me, and I love Donovan Mitchell as a player. I'm not this is this is me, I'm getting on him, but I, I absolutely Love him. I'm speaking as a fan here because I'm never going to be able to step on a basketball court professionally. But why complain about something when, y- if if anyone has benefited benefited from it, it's been you guys, the Jazz. You know they have the highest winning percentage. Donovan Mitchell's been very successful in leading his team. Why now are you complaining about it when you dropped a game to a competitive team in the 76ers that's been on top of their game and was on top of that game their night or th- their game that night? Excuse me. I don't, I'm not going to, I I can't understand that. And I don't think, like, he obviously said that they dropped that game, but he kind of alluded to the fact, and he didn't even allude, he kind of just came out and said it, that the refs lost in that game. Yeah, dude, you know what? In this NBA, the refs aren't, at least in this season and a little bit of last season, the refs haven't been that good. You need to accept that reality. You can't hold your head down. You know, I, I just don't see what complaining is going to do to stop it. You know, like, sure, we all know that the refs are terrible. That's a given. That's death, taxes, and the fact that NBA refs are going to be absolutely abhorrent. Send them back to high school. Man. Send them back to listen. <laughs> and I'm not saying that organizationally something can't be done with this, because uh, done for this, because I think honestly it should. It's getting a little bit out of hand here. But if you're Donovan Mitchell and you're already on a team in the Jazz that that have been so prolific, I don't understand where this com- you know complaining attitude is coming from you know they, they say that they're viewed as the villain yeah if you're viewed as the villain that should give you fuel i don't want to see you complaining about it and i don't think it's really even warranted if i'm being completely honest um i see i see what you're saying i see where you're coming from and i'm there right all right uh i kind of disagree with you a little bit though i gotta i gotta say that the, the the call itself, there was a couple calls at the end of that game that did kind of sway. And, you know, the 76ers, did they come out and they, did they play hard and they deserve the win? Yes, absolutely. Uh, did the Jazz kind of blow that by the end of it? Yes, absolutely. But the, the fact that Joel Embiid can stand up and tell the ref, tee him up, tee him up. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a little bit ridiculous, in my opinion. You know, I, I don't, I don't, th- I think that the ref should be like, tee him up. Okay, tee you up. Well, I just, I don't think that T should be handed out like that, uh, just that easy at all. However, getting back to the fact that Donovan Mitchell was complaining about it, it's just, you got to understand that when there's a, when there's a team like the Lakers, if the refing is bad, people will know. However, you take it, like, and this is what Donovan Mitchell was saying during his interview is that they are a small, small market team. Rudy Gobert said they're a small market team. The, the Utah Jazz aren't big market. People aren't just going to know what's happening with that team unless someone acknowledges it. 
And so the players, that's what Donovan Mitchell did. And he gave the 76ers their credit. He said, hey, they played, they played their asses off tonight. I'm not taking any credit away from them. You know, but this has to be acknowledged. It happened. And he said, you know, when when you are when you when you're a team that is a small market like that that is playing that prolifically, uh, there has to be there has to be some kind of narrative going along before you just get washed under the rug. Because there is, like you said, it's time I earned my damn respect. LeBron said it. If the if if people aren't talking about the 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 Utah Jazz, it doesn't matter whether they're the first seed or not. There's not going to be any. There's not no one's going to be talking about it. You know what I'm saying? Now, if 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 they feel like they if they feel like if they lose this game because of the refs and they don't say anything, right? No one brings it up. Then the next game they lose by the refs. You know what I'm saying? Then it gets worse and worse and worse. At least now that at least now Donovan Mitchell came out and he made it public. And now people are watching, and so the refs know, hey, we got to do this. We got to do these games fairly because people are people are catching on to the fact that there is a bias against this team, and that that I think that will make the refing for the for the Jazz and Jazz games better in the future. See, I don't think that the, I don't think though that it, it really like the media has too much of an effect. I, I mean. Do, do the Utah Jazz get a lot of coverage? No, but do I think that has a lot of bearing on the way? The ref should judge a game. Obviously not. But I, I tend to view it more like this. Like we know I, it's something that I thought about this morning. Joel Embiid, he put like interesting that you brought this up. He he says, tee him up. He yeah, brought that up. Him up. And he also, you know, he flopped. Rudy Gobert was in a completely legal defensive position. Let's just call a spade a spade. Joel Embiid flopped. Yes. That's Joel Embiid's game. There are guys in this year's NBA. And sure, the Lakers, when the Lakers get... Uh, certain refs not, you know, calling their way or, or certain games that don't go their way because the refs called it, it's going to get more attention than teams like the Utah Jazz or the Celtics. And that's just how it is. But I also think that there are guys who have learned how to play into that style. You're seeing it more with guards. Trey Young, Luka Doncic, guys are adapting to this style of game. If you're Donovan Mitchell, right, and you feel like you're really so underreported on, give give people a reason to report on you. And you got to, I know it sounds bad and I know I sound like I'm being jaded here, but you got to give them a reason to report on you. And you, I feel like instead of complaining about it, because I'm a big believer in the fact that complaining does no good in life. Right? Yeah. Like, because think about it. Why was Donovan Mitchell complaining? It, it's to get more eyes on it, correct? Yes. Right? Do you really think that the NBA now is going to open an investigation into the refing? Do you think that that Donovan Mitchell, one of the star players in the league, talking about it, is going to have more of a bearing of change than guys like LeBron James who have been talking about it and nothing's changed? No, I don't but, think the media plays into it like that. I just think that if you're the Donovan Mitchell in the Jazz, you're a very talented team, you're first in the West, I think you curtail your game around that. You curtail, you know that there's going to be certain guys, and Joel Embiid's, I can't curse on Mike, but he's an absolute schmuck, Right. <laughs> He's he, on the court. He's an irritator. Yeah, you know that he's gonna pull game. out. Yeah. He's like Pat Bev. Yeah, you know, and you ju you just got uh, part of the part of the bas part of basketball as a sport is the mental aspect. Yeah, absolutely. And Joel Embiid just happens to be good at. We've seen Joel Embiid be like, "Get us out of here!" You know what I'm yeah, saying? We've yeah. seen him. I I honestly believe he's been influential in guys getting thrown out before. He has. He right? was last night or the night before, whenever this game happened. I'm saying even before that. Yeah, absolutely. So there have been other times where the media, and I, I'd almost venture out to say that the Jazz got the media coverage that this deserved on that night because they're playing like champs. They're first in the West. You know, sure, they're a small market team, but they're first in the, they're above the Lakers, right? They've made a name for themselves this year. If you're Donovan Mitchell, you got to be, you got to be, I, I, I don't want to say better because he's been playing out of his mind, but you got to make adjustments. Life isn't fair. Basketball isn't fair. The refs suck this season. And I don't envision the NBA really doing anything about it because they have this set staff. There's corona going on. You're not going to be able to just slot guys in and out like that. So if you're the Jazz, you just got to you gotta evolve, you know? You, you think that the Jazz should just change their style of game? Because, like, let... You know, that, that that may be the 76ers game. Joel Embiid is great at getting in guys' heads. He's a great flopper. He's great this, that, the other thing, whatever. But that is not the Jazz game. The Jazz game is kind of just like playing hard, playing hard, playing hard as, as, as long as they can, trying to do it not like a – I'm not going to say a better way, but in a more like 
less less trying to get the refs involved type of way you know what i'm saying so you think that they should just change their style of game no no just to just to to keep up with the other teams no 100 percent no i say that they know who they're playing i think that you should know that you're going to play guys like joel Embiid that are really good at drawing out calls i think you know that you're going to play guys just the same way that if you play a team like the celtics you're going to have to make adjustments you know that when you play teams like the 76ers like the clippers who else who else is a really good agitator Marcus Smart on the Celtics. Patrick Beverly. Patrick, Pat Bev, the Clippers. Uh, you have guys like LeBron that you know are going to complain. Right. you got to take that into account, right? It's an unfair environment right So you now. think that, okay, so I see where you're I'd coming from I'd rather, say rather than him complaining about it, man, just do something about it. Go, you know what I mean? Go in there and you know that they're going to try to get the refs on you. So keep a straight face. Don't give them any reason to mess with you. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, you, you can, you can control, you can't control what the decision is that the refs make. But the refs are really soft this year, so you can you can control your reaction. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because if then, Donovan Mitchell had just walked away stone faced, Joel wouldn't have had a reason to try to get him yeah, teed up. Right. You gotta you gotta be responsible for you and only you. Yeah. That's I mean, what I'm saying. It was in the heat of frustration. Oh, I get that. I mean, I, I don't know if you saw the free throw differentials, and I didn't watch the yeah. game. I'm not gonna sit here and act like I watched the game. I, I didn't see exactly what's happening the entire game. But I did see the numbers. I saw the free throw, di free throw differentials, and the 76ers won that game on free throws. Yeah, man. I mean, 100%. Listen, listen, listen. I think it's just, I, th I think it's about adapting more so than, and it's cool that he's bringing attention to it. And I don't want to make it seem like I'm, I'm, you know, getting on Donovan Mitchell here, but I want to make sure that he knows that because Joel Embiid is 100%. If, I would bet, and we have to close up in a second here, I would bet money that Joel Embiid has had that same exact scenario happen to him where he's probably been cheated, and I'm, I'm, I got to go back in my memory, can't think of it off the top, but I guarantee the reason why he plays the way he plays is because he knows that the refing isn't that strong in the NBA at this point. And Joel, being a competitor, goes, yeah. well, hey, I need any bit of leverage I can get on that basketball court. That's, well, that's correct, you know, and... Joel Embiid, like you said, he's a master at that. And that's one of the reasons why the uh, the Philadelphia 76ers are playing so prolific this year. They're getting in the line. You Let, know? Let's be honest. In my opinion, we've talked about this before. Joel Embiid is the MVP for this year, yeah. especially so far. Uh, when you're a referee and you see the best player in the league playing his best basketball and you and then the other guys are getting frustrated, you're going to have a slight bias towards that guy. Right. And Joel Embiid is going to use that to his advantage. Yeah. There's nothing you can do about that. So I, I do believe that you are right. Although I don't 100% agree uh, with everything. Um, I do believe that you're right. I think Donovan Mitchell should have known that that was going to happen, should have expected that something like that was going to happen. Because I remember going back to high school when – uh, when there were, when there was a, some situation like that, our coach looked at us dead in the face and said, "Be professional. Act, right. act like you've done it before. Act like you've done it." You know before. what I'm saying? And Donovan Mitchell did not act like he's done it before. Donovan Mitchell went out there and he got aggravated. He let Joel Embiid be getting his right. head. He let the refs get the better, see the better side of him, or the worst side of him, I guess. Yeah. You know. So yeah, I can see where you're coming from. I think I think you definitely have a really good point. There. I, I just def I, I think and just one more thing until we we end off for today. I think it's awfully funny. This is going to sound like such a shot at Donovan Mitchell. But if Donovan Mitchell's talking about how everyone views him as a villain and they're not getting enough media coverage, then why are you acting like LeBron? Like you have all the media coverage in the world. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? Like, why are you crying out? If I'm in Donovan Mitchell's position, I'm saying, all right, listen, we're not getting the coverage that we deserve or we feel like we're not getting that coverage. All right, we're going to be dogs. I'm not doing the talk. I'm letting everyone else do the talking. Yeah. I'm going to evolve my game and keep it pushing. Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about. And I, you know, I, I think that Donovan Mitchell does believe, and I think any team that's the first seed in the West is the villain or whatever. But, like, people people see how good the Jazz have been doing, and people have been rooting for them. That's what I'm you know saying. What I'm saying? It's just hard with no fans in the stadium. I've, I've been rooting for them, and too. I, I think I think that's what the no, with the with how why the refing has been so badly. It's just there's no fans in the stadium. There's no, there's no checking of powers. Yeah, no. You know what I'm saying? No. And there's no crowd. Like you said, there's, the crowd usually can influence a ref in a certain way, too, because they're, they're very easily influenced, we've seen. Yeah, fucking assholes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that's been the episode for today. It's a much shorter episode, but we got bigger things coming. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for listening, and we will be back on Friday. Stay tuned for the post and pre-pod segments.